This is LXBN TV, and I'm Colin O'Keefe. Daily social media activity has become completely ingrained in many Americans' day-to-day -day lives, so much so that many criminal investigations include act user activity from sites like Twitter and Facebook. To explain when such social networking sites may or may not be forced to turn over your information to law enforcement, we bring in Hayes Hunt, a member of Cozen O'Connor in the Commercial Litigation and Criminal Defense and Government Investigations Practice Groups and author on the excellent From the Sidebar. Hayes, starting with the basics, what protections prevent Facebook and Twitter from having to turn over user data to law enforcement officials? Well, I, I guess that question is a, a little loaded. Um, the Stored Communications Act, you know, basically prohibits non-governmental entities from getting our information from Facebook and Twitter um, without a subpoena or court order. Essentially, it prohibits those social media providers from disclosing the contents of what we're doing without a, some type of court order, you know, mandating that they have to. Um, under the Stored Communications Act, which obviously has the umbrella of privacy and protects what we have, we kind of interpret as having protections for us, there is an exception for government investigation. So they will disclose with a subpoena or even a request in some instances, um, they will disclose some basic subscriber information and session information um, which is a specific exclusion to the act. However, um, Facebook and Twitter require um, that a court essentially has ordered uh, certain disclosures for contents with regard to a criminal investigation. I see. So, so in what situations then could user data be turned over author to authorities and what type of data would that be? I mean, in what situations do these court orders come about generally? Well, it, it, let's say there's a subpoena um, to Facebook, and under the SCA, there's uh, the SCA, which is the Stored Store Communication Act. There's some real basic information that can be your name or whatever your handle is, so to speak, um, the length of your service with Facebook, uh, and also like email addresses and recent login IP addresses. So there's there's certain metadata that is disclosed in response to a subpoena. The more, if you get an actual search warrant, which obviously a court and a judge has said that the government has sufficient probable cause to seize the information, um, then you're going to get a lot different content and a lot more, what we would say, private information. Just like if somebody would enter your house and go through your drawers if they had the requisite probable cause to believe something was in your drawers, right? In the same way, um, if there is a search warrant, they're going to get a lot more information from Facebook and from Twitter. Uh, that would include photographs, videos, wall posts, um, location information, and the specific messages that you're receiving. So that's pretty much everything once there's a search warrant. But Facebook and Twitter very much uh, require it. And then finally, with Twitter in particular looking to grow its corporate sponsorships, is it possible deals could be written or situations would arise where Twitter users could find their user data or account compromised because of the messages they convey possibly being, you know, derogatory towards partners? You know, an example just recently came up where uh, a reporter named Guy Adams was, was suspended supposedly for strongly criticizing NBC's tape delay of the Olympics. Um, but are there situations like this? where partners could almost force uh, users' behavior and user data to be compromised? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a, obviously their, their policies changed. In the instance of uh, Guy Adams, I would, there was a couple, I think, specific facts that are, are important there. One is, I think Guy Adams published an actual email of an NBC representative. Um, which in and of itself is, is a violation of, of Twitter's policy, or at least con concepts of privacy and, and publication and using Twitter to publish that information. Um, where Twitter got kind of caught up and kind of tripped over itself 
was that its actual people convinced NBC to report back to Twitter that it was a violation. And, you know, Facebook and Twitter, they rely on at least the concept and that all of us as users believe that it's a very open marketplace, free from, I would say, over corporate, inter, you know, intervention and it's not owned. It's it's the whole broader concepts of, of social media. And so when Twitter obviously has to protect its reputation strongly and kind of protect itself. So when its own people essentially convinced a corporate sponsor to, to report it, that was almost, that was Twitter doing the monitoring, the policing on behalf of somebody it's associated with, which obviously they have a financial interest with as well. Um, I guess as far as our information goes, and, and so that, that's what made it kind of interesting. And it's funny, you watch Twitter kind of backdoor policy, publishing a corporate email is now a violation of our terms of use and, and, and as the user to engagement. So they, they try to put that in there. And it kind of makes sense. You really shouldn't publish something like that on Twitter, I would suggest, is an inappropriate use of the tool to just to you know enter it to have people contact you. So I, I could see where it's a problem, but obviously it was up to the NBC executive to report it, not up to Twitter to protect its you know business relationship with NBC. So I think that if it were to work mechanically differently, I think Twitter would have been fine um, in saying that that violates our policy. And because this NBC executive, you know, is, is at least, you know, letting us know and informing us that his privacy has been violated, we agree and we're going to shut down that post. Um, they just went about it the wrong way. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, at this point, with when you talk about corporate relationships, it seems that Twitter has so much to gain by everyone being able to publish pretty openly and freely on a variety of, of subject matters. Maybe not somebody's personal, certainly not somebody's personal email, or let alone corporate email, because that distinction isn't that obvious because we do use our corporate emails and our personal emails kind of interchangeably at times. You know, it's how people contact us and for a variety of reasons. So I kind of understand Twitter's position. They just, they, and they took a beating, you know, in the press and obviously from social media about, you know, about what this, you know, as much as they own their own tool, it's the users that still have very much demand. So the minute that people decide that Twitter is somehow more related to corporate entities and it's it's monitoring or, or preventing people from having their voicing their opinions generally, then I think the entire mechanism fails. Their business model fails. So that's where there you see that tension between those two concepts, which I think is probably a tension between social media and, and corporate relationships in general. So. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think the I, somebody once described the beauty of Twitter as being they gave the users a bat and a ball and the users went out and decided to play baseball. And then when you, when Twitter comes in and tries to implement the rules, that's when things get a little, little it upsets people. Um, so it's nice just to have them let them go out and just use the service as they want to use the service. And I think that's kind of what we saw, but they uh, tripped themselves up over that, UL, that rule over user emails. Um, yeah. But once again, that was Hayes Hunt of Cozen O'Connor. And from the sidebar, for more of his insight, be sure to visit from the sidebar.com. And for more LXPN TV interviews, visit us at lxpn.lexblog.com. Thanks, Hayes. Hey, thanks, Colin. Take care.